What are we doing? Today, we're talking about the Expedition Voyager. Check it out. Okay, so the fall in the Pacific Northwest means rain. And it's here. And it's here. So the fall and the rain are here, and we started out at Mount Rainier, but we weren't able to finish our videos out there. So we have come to Tiger Mountain, to a trail close by where we live, uh, and we're just gonna talk to you about the Expedition Voyager today. Yeah, this was a sleeper. It was a total sleeper. We had never heard of this trailer, before the Overland Expo and quite literally were walking between trailers and said, what is that? Is that that's, that's different. How is that, refri what is up with that refrigerator? Yeah. And so we had to go take a look and now it is in our, our top. Yeah. It's in our, our top picks. And the really great thing is that uh, Artie was there and he is the owner and designer of the expedition along with his wife Stacy and they're going to talk to us about the details of the trailer. Yeah, so watch this. My wife and I own Artec Industries and we've been manufacturing off-road parts for decades, uh -huh. a very long time. We've been in the off-road space forever and love it and have understood what it takes, right, to be off-road, to, you know, to make parts that hold up to, to abuse on the trail. We have a family of seven, so we have five kids ranging from seven to 18 now. And it was just like every other teardrop out there just didn't quite meet all of our needs. You know what I mean? Yeah. With respect to mainly the kitchen, mm -hmm. but uh, because you know, really, any most teardrops are very similar in that um, you know the interior space is is somewhat 
comparable, right, right. as far as footprint. Um, and, and then you can put a rooftop tent on most things. So it wasn't necessarily about the sleeping, but it was gear storage and kitchen, cooking for seven people, having our kids involved in that process, right? Being that we were already in the off-road space, mm -hmm. have a full manufacturing facility, We've been doing this forever, understand material and everything. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna design something. <laughs> So we took all of that knowledge of you know what we have done in the past and applied it to now the living quarters and this is what happened. So the first prototype we put over 10,000 miles on it. We did uh, trails all over the west desert of Utah, um, all through Moab, right? We took this to the top of the world, top Ooh. of the world trail. And yeah. you know that iconic spot yeah. right on the cliff? Uh -huh. We had, we spent the night right there, my <laughs> wife and I, and, and you know, got some great media footage and stuff there. Oh, yeah. And I was like, yeah. sweetie, we were like driving down and I was like, guaranteed no other trailer manufacturer will have this footage period like, there's no way because it was insane <laughs> getting up that trail as you guys know yeah, right it's yeah, just yeah yeah that was incredible but again you know a testament to what we're about you know it's not about just you know hitting national parks or whatever like we want to get into the back country we would you know that's that's what we're about and that's you know that's what we come from we come from the off-road world yeah so yeah. it's not just Oh yeah, you know, I was, you know, doing whatever, you know, a dentist or whatever, and I uh, had this great idea, you know, and had some money and made a teardrop, you know. Right. No, this is like, it has some serious backstory, you know right. what I mean? Right. So, right. so yeah, you guys want to yeah. take a yeah. Quick yeah, yeah, yeah. look around? And so we've got the, the shower, right? And the water heater is right back here, and that comes uh, standard. Uh, you know in the in the trailer and this supplies water to the shower and also to the sink in the back right so it's all plumbed in uh, propane you know as you can see in the open configuration it's to the side of the trailer yeah and the reason for this is it's really easily accessible to your annex or your room underneath the tent right you can just right. come right here have a little um, you know rug or something in between so you can easily get a shower and then be able to get changed in a you know private larger area um, or in the middle of the night we just keep our toilet in here yeah and then you can get out if you're not walking through the woods trying to find gosh where did we you know set up the toilet you know what I mean so really handy but then for traveling you can see on this trailer um, when it's stowed, it's just right on the front, right? And so we have this quick disconnect that we just take off, and then you can swing it over to the side, like that, and then open it up, uh -huh. as you saw on that trailer, so. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. And then you have, you know, all your gear storage, as you can tell. Lots of storage. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. And the heater, is uh, right down in here, that black box right in there, is the Wabasto heater. So we use the Wabasto Evo 40 diesel heater. Uh -huh. And it's incredible because diesel is number one, a very reliable and efficient fuel source and widely available, right? And number two, it has automatic cap uh, altitude compensation. So you never get, you know, it's gonna work for mm -hmm. you when you need it the mm -hmm. most, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then number three, it's whisper quiet. It's a variable speed drive fan. It starts almost imperceivable and then ramps up as needed. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Really cool. And you can see the, the controls for that um, are, you know, right over, or the control for that is right over on the wall. And then you have a fresh and recirculated oh, air control. Oh, sorry guys. And what's important about that is the uh, this guy right here. So we offer a exterior heat port. So you simply unscrew this and you can duct heat up into your rooftop tent. Oh, and nice. again, having a family of seven, we yeah. have to think not only about us, but about our kids. Uh -huh. And you know, if we're in a really cold environment, 
you know, we want them to be comfortable as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you can either just open this and just leave the cap off and zip on the annex under the tent. And then, you know, this just pours heat into the annex area. Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously you're still in a tent, right? right. So it's not like it's going to get it super toasty. Yeah. But it takes the edge off and it's actually pretty comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So the ventilation or, or the vents on it are, you know, underneath the cabinet right back there. So you have a nice even flow of heat coming across the whole space. You have um, great storage up top. It's 22 inches deep, um, 10 inches tall, and uh, you know on both sides. And it's it's open between. So if you need to, you know, if, if something doesn't quite fit, or you know some hunters use this as well. It's great rifle storage. We can also put locks on those doors as well. So uh, just a you know deterrent. And then you have your power kind of center right here, if you will, 12 volt, and then the 110 with a remote, so you can turn on the inverter from inside the cabin. So, okay. And then also the pass-through into the pantry area in the back, in the kitchen. Yeah, so. that's nice, that's nice. You have four USB right up here, and then each one of these reading lights that you see uh -huh. back here, yep. each have a USB as well. So oh. you have six USB charging. Yeah, very nice, yeah. yeah, very nice. And this is really where the magic is, I think, happens, and what really sets us apart from every other trailer manufacturer. And that is the, the kitchen area, right? So we have, um, you know, space for the, this is a Dometic um, DZ75, so dual zone 75 liter cooler, a uh, fridge freezer, I should say, because you can do, you know, fridge freezer on either side, right? Yep. Yeah. So that, um, but you can also put in like an ARB, Snowmaster, Truma, whatever you want, um, you know, can be installed in this, you know, in this tray, right? Yeah. And what's cool is, um, this stainless steel uh, countertop just folds up, cooler slides in, and when it slides in, you also have the option of using this as well, uh, you know, while it's in while place. It's in. Yeah. So, you know, let's say you, you stop at the store and you're like, you know, you need to load up your groceries. You have two options. You can either open up the back and just put everything in. You can access the fridge freezer from right here. Or uh, you could just slide it out the side. Lay this down. Now I've got a place, right? We were talking about earlier how it's so cumbersome to pull out the cooler, lift it up, grab something, push it down, put it, you know what I mean? Now you have some a, a counter space right in front of you. You can get All things right, out, put them good. right here, and be able to, you know, get, you know, rearrange and, you know, get through, you know, go through your, uh, your, your fridge freezer items, right? To, right. Get what you need. So, um, you can totally see, right, how multiple people can use this space, right? Somebody could be, you know, chopping up while somebody else is there prepping, you know, something else while somebody else is here cooking, right? And then the beauty too is, you know, with like the, the storage is, you know, if somebody's right here, you know, right in the middle of cutting up bell pepper or whatever, and I need to get to spaghetti, I can still get to the pantry via this side access door right here, right? And you can even, like you saw before when we were in the cabin, use this for your midnight snacks, right? <laughs> so get in here and grab something, or if it's a cold rainy morning and you just wanna grab something and just stay in bed for a little while or whatever, uh, you can, so. 12 feet, right? So this is my wife, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. And uh, yeah, we designed this together and- He did it all. <laughs> he was asking me questions. <laughs> but, but I uh, use it more than him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, For yeah. Sure. yeah. So, What's the, your favorite the feature? Kitchen, the kitchen's my favorite. So there's seven of us. And it's nice that we can all work together. And like he was showing you the different configurations. You know, sometimes you've got a big meal and you just want to spread out. We've actually fed 30 people out of this trailer before. Just had a nice assembly line and hot food for everybody. That was great. But when there's just a few of us, you can have that cooler pulled in and just make some quick sandwiches. We've also
also been in some extreme weather and it's really nice. There's been times that I've just kind of tucked myself over to the side and I can make sandwiches right here on this or, you know, just there's so many different ways to use the kitchen and it's always like, oh, because we're in this situation or that situation, I can use the kitchen like this and it's perfect. Yeah. So I love it. Great. I also love the interior. It's just comfortable, clean in there. The climate control is fantastic. So I'm just always happy. I told him I can camp indefinitely now. <laughs> yeah. Our setup in this is so fast. You know, we can pull up and once we're level, I'm already cooking dinner. They're setting up the tent and they're done within 10 minutes and we're eating dinner 20 minutes after we pull into camp. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, if you, you know, got into camp and you're ready to cook, open up that door, slide out the, you know, the, the range there, the, the stove, turn on the propane and you're ready to cook. Okay. So it's all plumbed in uh, to the stove and up to the water heater. This door right here is actually... Okay, so let's pause here and reflect on our criteria. So Jeremy, what do you think about the expedition's off-road capability? So, 3,500 timbrin suspension, 22 inches of clearance, fully articulating hitch. But I think the most telling of its capability is the fact that they took it up on top of the world in Moab. I knew that impressed you. <laughs> I've, I've been up that trail. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not one of the most difficult trails by any means. However, I would not take just any 4x4 vehicle on that trail. So I think that was uh, impressive. <laughs> impressive, yes. yes. Oh, Chris, then what were your impressions about storage? Which is important because I got stuff, right? Got stuff. So the interior storage I thought was good. I liked that it was deep and wide and they, the, the doors stay open. There's a pass through. Uh, there are different options for the the uh, shelving inside and you got shelving behind. I did really like that the out, outside storage up front was large, that there's roof storage as well, and uh, the pantry storage seemed to be uh, decent so that you could bring along enough food to last for uh, a while depending on how many people you have in your family. I was frankly impressed with the design of the front box. The way it's been integrated into the body allows them to extend the size of the roof, which gives you more rooftop storage as well. It does have a hitch on the back that you can install a bike rack. Right. What's next? All right, Chris. So, I mean, one of the primary features on this trailer is the kitchen. Right. So what did you think about the kitchen? So the kitchen is laid out really well. The only concern that I have right now is on the setup that they had, the awning did not cover the refrigerator. But I think that that could be rectified. You could get a different awning, just different options there. But it was really functional. So you could tell, you could tell that uh, Stacy had a hand in designing this uh, rig because of the functionality of the kitchen. Yeah, I think one of my favorite features in the kitchen is how they decided to design the layout for the refrigerator, including the negative space, the ability to slide the refrigerator out and recapture that space for use as countertop. Yes. That's, uh, that's unique and uh, yeah, almost in this space unseen. I haven't seen it in any other trailer. Right. And the fact that they are thinking about every space. So the, the fold down right there by the refrigerator, the pass through from either way when you're at the sink and the stove, just uh, the place for your paper towel holder, which is important. Just thinking through the little things makes a difference. Okay, so moving on from the kitchen, their water system is 36 gallons. It's got a fully integrated hot water system, which again, it might not seem like that big a deal, but it's plumbed both for the shower and for the sink in the back, which again, 
is not real common on this size of a trailer. Okay, Chris, how did you feel about the living space? So one of the important things to me is that stand-up space and that uh, definitely we didn't have that, but it was nice. I think we need to actually possibly rent it. Yeah. Sleep in it. Uh, I think we noted that it's a little bit more narrow than the uh, than some of the other trailers. So I think we would just need to to see how that feels. Yeah. And uh, maybe sneak peek. We are planning on heading down that way here in a few weeks, and that is on the agenda to rent the expedition for two or three days just to uh, experience it firsthand because one of my concerns on the interior space is it's only 55 inches wide inside which is really small compared to a lot of the other trailers i'm taking my jacket off i'm getting toasty hiking it's getting me toasty okay but really on the pluses it's a great sitable space access to power from the inside it's got good storage 22 inches deep it doesn't cover your feet so you feel claustrophobic um, you have good headboard storage and you have power really both at your headboard and you know up into your shelving space both AC and DC outlets and we didn't capture we didn't capture any video of this but Artie was showing us that for entertainment, they actually have a small projector. The white surfaces on the inside are perfect for showing a movie. <laughs> it's, uh, I thought that was very smart thinking. Very smart, very smart. Finally, one of the living space considerations is where do you put your coat? Where do you put your shoes? And yeah, they do have coat racks on the inside <laughs> how simple is that they really do for shoes assuming you've got awning coverage you've got really big fenders that you can <laughs> you can put like two rows of shoes uh to to, to sit outside dry whatever and without can, bringing them inside and you can sit on the fenders put your shoes on which is also nice yeah so if you've been following us recently You'll know that one of our most important criteria is power. Power. <laughs> right. So let's listen to uh, what Artie has to say about the the power configuration on this rig. We use the Red Arc Red Vision system, and this is the distribution panel right here, as you can see. And um, this is the control um, display, right? And so from here. We can we can monitor really everything that's going on in a trailer, right? We can see uh, the temperature, and that is uh, a temperature probe that's outside under the trailer mm -hmm. uh, near the water tank, so you know um, you know if you're gonna freeze or not, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you can also see the battery level. We're at 48% right now, going down as people are playing with lighting and stuff. Um, but you can also see the solar is lit up green. That shows that we're um, actually, you know, that there's solar coming in. And so as things are being turned on and off, you can see in real time whether the battery's being depleted or charging. Right now it's being charged, right? And at the current uh, state, it would take two days to, to charge up fully. Um, you can also see the water tank right here. So that'll show you your water level and turn that back on. And then if you navigate to the side here, you can see a little bit more in depth what's going on kind of behind the scenes, right? So you have the battery management and you can see how many amps is coming out of that from the solar going to the load, right? 1.2 amps and then going to charging the batteries, four amps right there. Then you can also see how many uh, watts we're making with solar right now and what the battery state is right now, 12.24 volts, and what the battery temperature is. So that's important if you have the lithium option. So then you can see solar energy per day, how much we're making per day. You can also see the state of charge per day, how much it was being charged versus depleted. 
Then you can also see the state of charge per hour, right? Kind of what's going on with your system. So great uh, in order to kind of diagnose and you know see what's going on in the system. And then you have, so that's kind of all of uh, the battery management side. This also is where we can turn on and off our lighting, right? Mm -hmm. Turn on and off the pump. Um, and we can navigate to another screen and we can turn off other circuits that even have switches inside the cabin, right? So we have switches by the doors for exterior lighting or interior lighting or the reading lamps and stuff like that. So all of those circuits are controlled here as well. So you have kind of a master disconnect, if you will. Right. So we can, I can double tap this twice. Now it turns off all the circuits except for the fridge, which we've programmed to always stay on. Mm -hmm. Unless it reaches a critical voltage level in the batteries, then it'll turn off. But um, those are locked out. So nowhere in the trailer does it have power except to the fridge right now. And that's just by double tapping this. So these switches, you may ask like, oh, hey, that looks like a big disconnect, right? Yeah. So this is actually, this battery disconnect and this uh, breaker are for the inverter. So when you want to use the inverter, you can turn that on, make sure that's on, and then just press that button right back there, and you have 110 power, right? So, or you can also control that from inside the cabin as well with the remote. Okay. Uh, 2000 watt inverter, uh, so you can power really anything you want. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, 2000 watts is pretty good, so. Um, my wife's done her flat iron or hair dryer or even an instant pot. Uh -huh. uh, we'll go off as a family for a hike and she, you know how it is, um, everybody gets back to camp hungry, tired, wants to sit around and what's the first thing they ask, right? Mom, when's dinner going to be ready? <laughs> what are we having? What are, you know, and she's like, are you kidding me? You know, so having that instant pot ready to go as soon as we get back is uh -huh. awesome. Uh -huh. So, so any rate, plenty of power. As as I said before, um, we have a lithium uh, battery upgrade, uh, which I would highly recommend. It's it's great. I mean, the AGMs do work well, um, but the lithium, uh, you know, you have so much more power, right? Because you can draw down those batteries all the way to 10% yeah. safely, and then charge them back up. So you have a lot more capacity. Right, right, right. right. So, right. Uh, 230 amp hours with the AGM. Uh, 200 with the lithium uh, amp hours, and uh, and then the program the system is all uh, programmed to those batteries from the factory. Uh, another great thing is it's also Bluetooth, so you can control everything that you just saw on there uh -huh. through your phone. Okay, that's uh, that's that's quite that's quite the setup. Two batteries, which for probably most everyone's configuration is quite adequate we didn't catch it on video but he did describe some users adding a third battery but you start to creep into the pantry space to add that third battery up behind the inverter yeah and now I'm starting to squawk <laughs> <laughs> so seems like a really great setup for the heat uh, what does what are the options for air let's hear what Artie has to say about that we have been working with Zero Breeze, and uh, we do have an option to put in air conditioning uh, in this, and we're uh, also exploring other options for AC for you know, our, our friends down in the south, southeast especially, you know, with all the humidity. So, yeah. Okay, so air options are there and may be underway. I do think we have a higher need for the AC maybe than most so a 12 volt unit might might or might not be sufficient for what we're looking for. I, I think being from the south we are very conscious about uh, the the possibility of getting hot yeah. and uh, we want to make sure that we can be comfortable in our space. Yeah so interestingly off-road trailers are generally manufactured in one of two form factors they're either this manufactured box or they're a teardrop configuration. So Mark from Bean Trailer talked to us quite a bit about the structure of the bean. What did he have to say about the bean? Yeah, so his, his point of view was 
single fiberglass unibody that eliminates seams and joints that prevents vibration and the general off-road stresses from uh, creating problems in your your structure yeah. now what well, already had a different take on that <laughs> he did he? he had a very different take so let's hear what already had to say about that one so we went off of the concept of aircraft manufacturing. So if you any aircraft you've ever been in, if you've been in an aircraft, is riveted. And the reason it's riveted is because that material needs to move and flex, right? And when you take off, those wings load up and they come up, right? You're in turbulence and they're bouncing, right? Um, depending on loading, you know, there's so many dynamic loading scenarios that happen in the aircraft. Well now think of that in the off-road world, right? Washboard roads, hitting a pothole, maybe not seeing a rock and just, you know what I mean? You have the same type of loading, dynamic loading requirements in the off-road space as you do in aviation. So as you'll notice, everywhere on this trailer are rivets. Each one of these rivets is 3,000 pound capacity and you can just take a look at how many rivets there are. Now down on the frame is a different style of rivet that we use and it's an ultra high strength fastener that is a direct welding replacement and those are 5,000 pound capacity rivets. And if you maybe want to put the camera under or feel just in this one corner alone is 120,000 pounds of holding force, just right here. It allows for that dynamic loading, right? It allows the material to smooth and flex as needed so we don't get micro fractures that turn into, you know, fractures and, and cracks uh, down the road because a weld joint is completely rigid. It's not going to flex it's not gonna move it's not you know what I mean it is fast like it's it's there you know what I mean yeah and it won't give so so that is our answer so we have a six inch frame then we have eighth inch aluminum scales that wrap over and there's 3,000 pound capacity rivets every four inches all the way around the perimeter of the trailer so it effectively creates not only just the frame as a support but the entire structure becomes a unibody as well. So you kind of get the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> so, so who's right? I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I guess time would tell. Time. Time would tell. Time. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's very feasible that they're both right. That they are over-engineering the specifications. And that there's really no situation that will... Uh, outperform the the structural integrity of their rig. That's possible too. But in the event <laughs> that you do have a problem, listen to what Artie has to say about his warranty. We offer a five-year warranty on everything that we produce on this trailer. So if there's any problem or anything, you can come by our shop. We are in North Salt Lake and we can absolutely you know take care of it. I don't even I've never even yeah. or or we can work with a a, a shop That's in your area out, right, right? Yeah. however you might be and uh, and support you. Yeah. 5 years. That is impressive. We didn't hear that from any other manufacturer, did we? No. None. Yeah. None. So that speaks to the confidence they have in their product. Okay, so Chris, final thoughts. What did you like? So I liked the storage. I liked the options for the stand-up area outside. Uh, I liked them, honestly. They, uh, they built and designed this product with them in mind and with others in mind and uh it's built with love <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's like a subaru so <laughs> it's uh definitely one that 
I connect with, which is which is great because you want uh, if you're gonna buy something and make this kind of commitment, you you want to believe in the product. Right, right. So what what didn't you like? Okay, I couldn't stand up inside. So we've talked about that before. <laughs> uh, and the fact that it's a little bit more narrow, not as much sleeping space. I like you, <laughs> but you are hot at night. And just, you know, you put off a decent amount of, of heat. So uh, I need a little bit of me space inside the rig. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So how about you? What did, uh, what did you like? So I really liked the fact that he backs up his product enough to take it up on top of the world. Yeah. I, 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 I can't say that, I think, enough. I like that the front storage box is integrated with the body. You don't have to choose gear. You can put gear on top. You've got a large roof. That, I think, is... I mean, you almost can't oversell that. that you, you don't have to leave stuff behind. And I like how it's all an integrated product. The water is heated both to the shower and ducted or plumbed i guess is the right word plumbed back to the galley the heater is uh is uh, for a, a rig this size it's well integrated you've got heat out to your annex or tent space and you've got gas already plumbed both to your kitchen galley for the burners and to the hot water heater. It's a system all brought together by the Red Arc Vision. I think that's a, uh, that's a testament to just good engineering, good planning, good design, good engineering. On the negative side, hmm, yeah, the 55 inches is, uh, is something to, to consider. Right. Maybe the other negative is quite simply, as of the making of this video, their, their lead time is out 10 months or so. That's it's, it's a good chunk of change to wait for, but that's, that's pretty standard across the industry. Not many of them are able to manufacture quickly. So just something might not uh, take them out of the running necessarily, but it is something to consider. Right. Yeah, and speaking of money, yeah, so before we wrap the video up, why don't we let Artie tell us about the price. Currently, uh, the base model is at $37,500, so $37,500, and that comes pretty well equipped. I mean, there's not, there's only the fridge freezer in the back, that's an option, and the kitchen door organizer, that's an option. Other than that, uh, everything in the kitchen area is standard. There's also the lithium upgrade option, right? And the heater is an option. Uh, the awning and the tent would be an option as well. Uh, AC would be an option. So, but that's really about it oh the shower enclosure yeah, is an is, option is like with the hot water heater and shower wand itself is that's basically where, so like our, there's you know, like quite a bit of what you see is, is what you get you know what I mean right, right. Um, so yeah so the entry level is uh, like I said 37.5 um, typically equipped we see between I don't know 40 to 45 thousand something like that is about where we kind of see it you know most of uh, most of the orders so we actually spent so the price is comparable to other rigs with the features and capabilities that uh, the expedition voyager has so i'm not pushed away just because of the the price so where does this rank in our overall standings probably in the top two i think at this point because there's so many of them that are, that are unique and they do so many interesting things and uh, I think you just have to, again, decide what's most important to you, which brings us back to your, uh, your spreadsheet that talks about some different uh, rankings and, and whatnot, and I'm, I know you'll talk about that more later, but it's, uh, it's important for us to kind of rank those based upon our own criteria and our own priorities. Right, so stay tuned for that. So that's it for this video. Uh, stay tuned. I think the next video we will be doing is the sniper. Okay. Yeah, I think it's I think it's There's the a sniper. Question in your voice. Right. <laughs>
the sniper, the Teton, <laughs> the fill in the blank. Yeah. So yeah. different options. All right. See you next time. This is more inviting where our chests are facing each other. I like it when our chests face each other. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jeremy, I'm between two ferns. 